Welcome to my new production process and yes, another studio tour. If you're a regular viewer, you'll have noticed, hopefully, that my last few videos have been quite different. In the past, I just sit here at this desk talking to the camera like I'm doing now and going between that and shots of products. Now I'm walking around the studio, I'm walking around fields near my house. I've got a bit more mobile and I've made these changes because I want to stay fresh, I want to keep you guys engaged for as long as possible and it's nice to switch things up. And what makes all of this possible is this studio and the gear that I have inside it. It's taken me about a year to get to this stage since I moved in and quite a bit of money as you can probably guess as well but it was all worth it because I've now got this perfect creative space which I'd like to show you today. And I know that I've done a few studio tours already but the difference with this one is that I'm going to focus on the new movable set that I've got, the gear that I use and just give you an insight into how I'm creating these new videos. Firstly, just a very quick word from today's sponsor, which is Riverside. Now, Riverside is a platform that helps you record podcasts and interviews remotely. And I've been using it over the last few weeks to record the 8 or 16 podcast. The way that it works is that each guest and the host logs in via a web browser, as normal, a bit like Zoom. But what Riverside does very cleverly is record the audio and video for each guest separately and on their local computers. And then, while you're recording your podcast, Riverside automatically uploads that video and audio to the cloud. You don't have to do anything, it does all of this in the background seamlessly. And it's very high quality, uncompressed stuff as well. You get up to 4K video and up to 48 kilohertz audio. It's why more than 70,000 people use this, including Gary V, The New York Times and Spotify. It's just so, so easy. You literally log in via your web browser, there's no software to download, the guest doesn't have to do anything at all, everything happens in the background, and then once you've finished your podcast, you can download the high quality uncompressed files from Riverside. Now I've tested this and the quality between Riverside and all of the gear that I have here recording stuff locally is no different whatsoever. There's loads of really cool features built into it as well, including a backstage option where, for instance, you can have your producer log into the call but not appear on the call. But the beauty of Riverside is, well, it's two things. It's the ease of use, it's the quality of the audio and the video that it produces, and it's the amount of time it saves you as a podcast producer. We're going to use it going forward for the 8 or 16 podcast. Thank you very much to Riverside for sponsoring this video, and if you want to check it out yourself, just click that link in the description. So you've just seen the moving studio in action. I started this video over there, and then I did the sponsor read over here. In the past, that would have been completely unthinkable. And that's because in the past, I was rooted to this desk. I was always sat here. I couldn't move. All the lighting was pretty much fixed. All the audio was done. I didn't dare go anywhere else. But I did find a solution, well, two solutions. We'll start with the lighting. And I do have my two mates, Patrick Rambles and Alex Gear and Tech to thank for this. I'll put links to both of their channels in the description. And it's all down to these brilliant newer stands here. They're normal C stands that you put lights onto, but they've got wheels. Putting wheels onto anything in a studio is, it's game changing. It just means that I can grab these C stands and move my key lights around to wherever they need to be. And that's just thanks to three caster wheels, so straightforward. They come with these newer C stands, I'll put a link in the description. Now in terms of lighting, I have completely switched things up and it's thanks to a new partnership I have with Nanlite. I've got a whole bunch of Nanlites in here. I've got the Nanlite FS150, which is a brilliant bi-colour key light. I've also got the FS300B. That's the one that's lighting me now, this lovely soft light, thanks to these big soft boxes. I barely touch the power this thing's capable of. I think it's on about 13% at the moment. I've also got an FS60B, which is this one here, linked up to this lovely soft box. This is used just to cast lots of light throughout the room, just to raise the brightness level a bit. And as every single YouTuber has to have, I have a bunch of light tubes as well. Ironically quite dark over here, but they're charging down here. I'll show you some B-roll of them. These are multicolored Pavo tubes. They're very bright, the battery's very good. They just look great in the background in certain shots. I've also got this which is a mini Pavo tube, which I use all the time. A lot of the B-roll that you see shot on the desk over there, if I do like an overhead shot, there's normally some accent color going on, sort of just out of shot. It's normally this that provides it because you can change the color on this and obviously the brightness as well. And because it's so small and the battery's so good, you can chuck it anywhere. 
When it comes to thumbnails, I keep it pretty simple really. I always shoot them here against this wall because it's nice and blank. The setup I use for this is this. Now this is a Sony A7S II. Long-term viewers of the channel may remember me talking about this quite a, quite a while ago because I made the first 80-ish videos for this channel on that camera. So it means quite a lot to me. Unfortunately, it's terrible for YouTube because it's got awful autofocus. It's just no good really as a video camera when you're talking to yourself, but it's still a very good stills camera. So it sits on this Monfrotto tripod. I've got a little monitor to monitor myself on here, pulling stupid faces. Cable release as well. That's vital when you're doing this on your own. Just means I can take the photo without getting someone else to do it for me. It's really straightforward. It's the simplest part of this process. I don't spend very long on thumbnails, which I know is a dirty phrase, but sorry. Right, onto one of my favorite subjects that I very rarely talk about on this channel, cameras. The main camera driving this channel is the Sony FX3, which when I bought this, I talked about a moment ago, the Sony A7S II, which wasn't right. It, it got me through 80 videos and it means a lot to me for that but it caused huge problems with two things, autofocus, like I mentioned, but also battery life, which was absolutely terrible. Oh, and also it's got a recording limit of 25 minutes-ish, which is just horrible. This got rid of all of that stuff. It was a very expensive purchase, a big investment for this business, but there's no recording limit. There is the probably the best, I think, the best, eye detection autofocus on the market and gorgeous image quality. Now going back to the mobile nature of this new studio setup, it's all about this camera, this mic and this. We'll start with this which is the PGY Tech tripod. This is such an ingenious little thing. You basically attach your camera to the top of it as you would expect like that. No dramas, quite straightforward. That gives you a very kind of Casey Neistat style vlogging device like that. But all of this stuff moves. So I can swing out these legs here. That gives me a little tripod. I can flip out this thing here and hang it from things very securely. It can go really low as well. So I can press that button there and get a really nice low angle if I need to. This is such a useful tool for a filmmaker. Did I just call myself a filmmaker? For a YouTuber. But on top of this, as I mentioned, we have a Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. At the moment, I'm actually using the Rode NTG1, which I use, well, I used to use for pretty much every video. Since I've had this, I barely use that shotgun mic up there. And in terms of quality, that one does deliver better audio, just, but no one really cares because the audio that comes from the VideoMic Pro Plus is fantastic. In terms of the lens, it's a Sigma 16 to 28, nice wide angle for vlogging and that sort of stuff. And at the moment, I'm using this more than my other lenses. This is the Sony 24 millimeter G Master 1.4, quite an expensive lens, but an absolutely beautiful lens for A-roll. And sorry, I keep using these phrases. A-roll is talking to camera basically. But yeah, I've used this for most videos actually, until I, I started doing this new way of filming things. The 24mm G Master was my main lens. I still use it quite a bit for that purpose. Then we have my main B-roll lens, which is the Sigma 24-70 f2.8. Then we've got the 90mm macro lens from Sony. I love this thing. You have to be careful not to overuse it because macro photography and macro video is quite addictive. So I do use it quite sparingly, but it's very useful for things like phone reviews where I want to get a really tight angle on something. And then occasionally I use this absolute monster, which is a Sigma. Again, I'm not sponsored by Sigma. I just like their lenses. A Sigma 70 to 200 f 2.8. It's an absolute beast. It's not much use in this studio really because there's not enough room. But if I'm filming myself outside, say putting up a security camera or something, it's just handy to have this a bit further away and get some nice zooming compression. And if you're wondering how I shot that last piece of footage, it was all on the iPhone 14 Pro Max with cinematic mode, quite impressive. But once everything is filmed, done and ready to be edited, it heads over to here and into Final Cut Pro. I'm a huge believer in sticking with the tools that work for you. I've never used Adobe Premiere, not because I don't like it or don't want to use it. I've just worked out how to make Final Cut Pro work for me. But if you wanna watch my full production desk tour to find out how I go from filming all of that stuff in this movable studio to getting it onto YouTube, then keep watching for a link to my full production desk tour.